Oh, it's mailbag time again. Got a bunch of stuff here. I've also got a massive box which won't even fit on my desk. So I'm going to have to unpack that separately. But right now I don't have room. Like normally I'll show you a view of the room whilst I unpack it on the floor. Well, my room's so crammed right now I can't even do that. So I'm going to have to unpack it and bring it over to the desk afterwards. So watch out for that later on. That'll be the last thing I do. In the meantime, I've got this other stuff to look at. I'm laughing. Come on, say again. You won't believe how crammed this room is. His wife hates him. Watch later to see him uncram this room. <laughs> is that even a word? Uncram? Decram? Cramectomy? <laughs> Get the links for these down below, as usual. Well, if possible anyway. This is a bit of a giveaway. Okay. What are these? This is my phone screens. Completely assembled screens. This is intact, complete with all the earphone piece and everything up here. It's a complete screen assembly. This is even better than what I normally get. And a home button. Home buttons you have to be careful with because you know if you can transfer your original one over it's better because they're encoded. So I think these are iPhone 6S screens. They could be 6s. I'll have to compare the flexors up here because the flexors are slightly different between the two. So I believe these are um, reused screens. So I think these are um, salvage screens and broken phones. That's what I believe they are. So, Apple Original. I think of it that way. Apple Original screens. But that's fine. If they work fine, that's not an issue, is it? So I just compared these two screens against one of, of my known ones here, which is what I normally get, which don't have all the assembled items on them either. These are, you have to transfer everything over. Which are, these are nice quality screens, they work quite nicely. Um, that's a 6S. So this one here is just a 6 and this one here is a 6S. So the white one's a 6 screen and the black one was a 6S screen. So, hmm. Seems to be an iPhone around this time, doesn't it? iPhone my bag. So these are some rubber gaskets which are for the 6, 6S, 6 Plus and 6S Plus. So these are for the home buttons and they are hopefully self-adhesive. It's also got my little plastic spudger which is always nice to get. Yeah, I've actually got some of those. I bought, bought, bought some, like a little business card, but it's also good for as a spudger. Um, and so there's a bunch of them in here. So there you go. This is the rubber gas that goes around the home buttons to help hold them on. So I've been meaning to get a bunch of these because there's been times I've had ones which I've had to Rehome, as it were, with the home buttons across onto a new screen and the adhesives giving up a little bit and that sort of stuff. So I thought I'd get some new ones. Hopefully, these adhesives are intact. I imagine they will be because they're brand new. It says connectors. I'm slowly getting my items caught up with. So, where I've purchased stuff some time ago, they're gradually starting to show up now because of the whole COVID thing, you know, it's, it's causing big delays. So things are gradually catching up now, so things which I ordered a long time ago are turning up and stuff which I'm ordering recently is coming through pretty quickly, so it's kind of good, I suppose. But I've still got things which are missing. So I've shown these before, and um, I did get a couple of questions about them. So these are basically 4mm banana jack posts, like binding posts. All right, and this is bolts onto the front panel of the chassis. But this side's got a 4mm jack in it. All right, so you can actually use this as either a binding post or a femoral jack. Now, what I like about these is that you can actually take this off, as I just did, and sometimes you can put that on other bits of gear which have the same binding post arrangement, the same size post, and the same threads. Like I've actually done this to my Siglent SDL1020XE. This has the same size posts. So I've actually got a set of these, I've taken these off. And what that's done is allow me, instead of having just a plain binding post only, it means I can put a banana jack in there and just plug in a banana cable, which is really handy. So there you go, it's so in place on here. So this is what I did on this one. You've got the original binding posts and I just swapped them out for these ones. It means you've got the options then of either using banana jacks or the actual binding post. Now, the thing you've got to watch out for is that 
the depth of these may not be right for the actual post so what I actually do on mine is I actually put some washers on here to space it out because otherwise this sticks out too much on that threaded section there and we actually bottom out into the plastic so that's why I put those washers on there so I can just use that to make sure it's bedded right down and done nice and tight so good electrical connections right so it's good, good connections to the front panel there nice and solid good. so there's no voltage drop across it or minimal voltage drop and you still use banana jacks quite easily but yeah nice and upgrade and obviously you can use these as standard banana jacks as well if you want you know if you're doing a project you can use these and it gives you both options I mean there are different types you could use you can get plain banana ones but I've got these because they're nice for upgrading out a bit of gear I've used these on a couple of things now don't think I've still got that massive box to do with yet I'm not talking about this one I'm talking about the other one these are banana jacks which are supposed to be shorting plugs so these are for doing better test gear and you need to null them out you can plug those into the front and it will null it out and then you also got a terminal here as well which you can plug into so if you need to link multiple devices if you want to do a four wire shunt then what you could probably do is stack them like this and that give you a four wire shunt handy so yeah I've got hooked up to this doing two wire resistance right now it's saying that, do a shift, four wire resistance because I've got all four wires linked together that's nutting out quite nicely does it matter if I unplug this one? sometimes bits of gear do require you to link that across all four um, this one doesn't really care two wire, same so this one, in this case doesn't actually matter but sometimes it's best to link across both as well but yeah, that's what they're for so I was actually looking at these originally because, well, something similar to this. There's some I saw on eBay which are like a PCB with, uh, with the male banana jacks on them mounted on a PCB. So they look quite nice. And I thought, well, they're a bit pricey. I wasn't happy about the price on them. I mean, they look nice enough, but they're too expensive for what they were. They might have been really high quality banana jacks and stuff like that. I don't know, but maybe they were, maybe they weren't. But they were too expensive for my liking. So I've been looking and I found these. But at least these are more versatile, you're not restricted to just having four in that pattern. You know, with these ones you can do two different patterns, you know, individual ones, stuff like that. So it's a bit better. So I do already have some links like um like these, which is what I've been using before. These are primary ones I think. I've used these in my gear when I'm doing calibration stuff and nothing normally. But uh, these ones are a bit more versatile because you can link all four terminals together, as I said. Ah. I keep forgetting, these paper bags, this does not cut through them. Why does that do that? So these are some orange digits. So I obviously got these for the Datron project. There's a KCSA 56 106. I ordered these ages ago, but they weren't in stock at the time. So I only ordered 10, which is enough to do one unit. Um, it requires, was it 8 digits I think it was? I think it was 8 segments or was it 9? I can't remember. Here it is. 9. It uses 9 digits. Okay, so that's what's going to go on with that ball. So these are orange ones. I thought, you know, if I've been building with red ones, let's try with some orange ones as well and see how they come out. You may never do it, but at least I've got some displays. Red looks okay but orange is more in keeping with its original aesthetic because it was originally an orange display so I think it might look nicer but unfortunately these are quite expensive devices um, I did find some other ones which are much cheaper they've got a black face as well these aren't black face, these are white face I think or grey face yeah you can see it in there it's a grey face on it so that also puts me off them slightly so if I can get the ones with black face which are also orange then it might be an option but uh, and also the right price because these are quite expensive Let's see what this is. Spudger thing. It's like polypropylene, in case you care. And it's like a diffusing film, as you can see. Uh, I don't know if it's hovered adhesive, I don't remember. It doesn't seem to say. Although there's something inside there, let's take this off. Welcome to our store, it says, right. With instructions. I don't know if this is like a static, oh there we go, there's a film, peeling film here, so it probably is adhesive. Plates wet film on glass, so yes, it's probably a static adhesive one, using static cling. So it's meant for doing privatisation of glass 
you know, for like bathrooms and stuff like that, or you know, privacy areas. But what I was thinking of this for is a diffuser, because you can see it's quite good diffusing there. See my finger behind it. All right, so there's the film. It's quite a good diffusion there, even at a distance. So if you put a light behind it, it should actually diffuse quite well. Yeah, put a light there. Obviously a pinpoint light would be better. But I was thinking about making some light modules out of this, because I've got a whole bunch of really good quality LEDs, and I was thinking about um, making some extra lighting for my bench here, to get some different uh, aspects on there, because right now I've got these big lights, which can cause a lot of reflections and stuff like that. I was looking for some different arrangements to see if I can get rid of all that glare and stuff. So I'm not sure how much is actually on this roll, it's quite a bit there. Um, I think it might be five meters or two meters or something, I don't remember. Anyway, now I've got this big box. I think I know what's in here already. I can get into it. I don't think that's the top. <laughs> Maybe that's just a crease in the box. Hmm. Maybe it's this way then. That looks more like it. This is going to be messy. I'm going to reorganise myself here. Yeah, there you go. Got the cardboard off the top, and there we go. That's what's in it. Let's try and grab one out. Set of drawers. Another set of drawers. what I've got here. There's three sets of identical drawers and these are the exact same ones I've already got. Now the reason I buy these is because you want to try and keep your drawers the same. Right, you can see these look the same as the ones in the background here because they are exactly the same from the same person, well the same company. The thing is, when it comes to the, in these kinds of drawers, I always recommend you keep spare ones because you never quite know when you need to expand your stock and you know, reorganise things and just tidy it all up. And then you find out, ah, oh, I've run out of drawers, and then you need to buy some more, and you can't get the same ones again. So it's quite important to do that. If you want to have like a rack of drawers, like I've got on my other wall there, which are all the same, you want to get a bunch of them. Now, this particular case here is because of Daniel Bogdanoff. <laughs> he posted a thing on Twitter the other day about his drawer set, and he's mentioned, uh, he's asking something about it, I can't remember what that was now. Marco Reps also replied showing his set of drawers, which he says he doesn't actually use that much because he can get the parts quite quickly anyway, so he doesn't really use them that much anymore. Whereas where I am, I keep a stock because stuff I get is usually quite rare, hard to find. So when I do find them, I'll, I buy more than I need and I'll store some. So next time I've got some, well, next time I've got a need for some, I've got them. And so I've got some more. Now, I only had one set of drawers left. And when Daniel Bogdanoff mentioned about his drawers, I'm thinking, ah, actually, I've been meaning to buy some more. So, three more sets, that should do me for a while. Now, I have been reorganising my drawers, I actually did change them around the other day, which took up a bunch more space, but they're better organised, which is the important thing, which is you know, kind of nice to have. So I'm going to be putting these on my shelf for the time being, I don't actually need them yet, but I will need them eventually, right? and at least when I do need them, I've got sets. And I do actually have some older ones which are different style and it may be possible that I change those out to these ones so I can have a, a rack of all the same ones, you know. But these are from J-Car Electronics which are a company in the New Zealand and Australia and these are the ones they sell. I did actually try and find this exact one on AliExpress if I could find them cheaper but I couldn't find them at all. So I don't know where they're sourcing them from. They could be custom just for them, I don't know. Or well, they got them somewhere else, I don't know. But these are nice drawers, they're good quality drawers, I quite like them. Or four empty sets, which is great. Well, that should do me for quite some time, even if I do reorganise things. And as you know, I, I do buy a lot of parts and bits and bits and pieces. And so I've got bags of bits right now for bits of test gear. And maybe what I'll do is I might end up dedicating a drawer to a certain type, like this one. This one become HP parts. This one could be Fluke parts. This one could be Marconi parts, for example. I could do something like that. 
and then it's organised in a way so I know exactly where to look for that part, that piece of test gear, those parts. Now I've also got my website which is mypartsbin.com mypartsbin.com that's my um, parts inventory website which is completely free to use it's also open source so you can download a version of the website not an exact copy it's a stripped down version of the website but you can run it on your own web server it doesn't have any security or anything like that in it so I've taken all that out because I don't want people knowing how my site is secured for obvious reasons if you want to run your own web server privately you can't put it on the web unless you want to put your own security settings into it that's fine um, but you can download it yourself and then you can actually transfer your inventory between your own machine your local web server and my website so you can back up to my website or the other way around you can use my website as the main one and back up to your own server if you want you know whichever you want to do you can sync them and that sort of stuff but that's mypartsbin.com so go and check that out if you're interested in trying to find a way of storing your parts it's a very very simple system i've kept it very simple doesn't have a lot of bells and whistles on it i've done it intentionally because i want it to be a simple system i don't want to have all this complexity and having to set things up in certain ways and have these configurations you just drop the parts in you tell them where they are you tell them what the parts are you link in the pdf data sheet or web page you can actually put multiple links on each device so you can link both you can link to a web page where you would source them or you can link to the pdf data sheet and that sort of stuff you can do that all in the same part you can do all that sort of thing on it build that Oh, about a year or so ago now, I was talking to Unexpected Maker and he was mentioning about potentially doing one and I was thinking, oh, actually, I've been meaning to do one. And so I built one, then he also built his own system as well for his own use, which he's done some videos on as well. Anyway, so I built mine for me to use and I've also open sourced that, so if you want to use it, go grab it, you can download it. It runs on MySQL PHP systems, um, a lamp server, I suppose you could call it. Pastures, there's enough waffling about that. We've still got a big box yet, big box, which I think I'm going to have to open and bring over here. Right, there we go, it's out of the box. And it's still a secret right now. What we do have is a power cable. US tart, no good to me. I'll probably cut that up or something, chuck it out, I don't know. But it's not really worth cutting a plug off and putting any plug on because you can buy a cable for less than a plug, so it doesn't make sense. Right, Dave Jones found a whole bunch of plugs recently in a bin. Hundreds of them, couldn't believe it. Over here, those particular plugs are $20 each. Might be slightly more. There's hundreds of them in that bin, it's incredible. Well worth salvaging. Somebody else reckon they're $6 each. I don't know where they're getting them from, but maybe it's from a different country where they don't rip people off. So let's get in this thing. Let's find out what's in it. Um, I'd like to try and keep this film of a camera. I don't think it's going to be possible. Now it's only got one layer, but that doesn't matter because, well hopefully it doesn't matter, the packaging this came in was a eBay one, which has got that expanded foam all around it inside the plastic wrap. That, um, like a bag, which they didn't blow up. So it's really all packaged, so hopefully this wasn't the only packaging on it before it got to eBay because it's like a, they repack it, right? So who knows what packaging it had before it got there. Hopefully this wasn't all it had. It could have been. I can see some damage on this corner. So who knows? Hopefully it was packed better than that. We have a pull out car. It's an A165. So it's nice having a pull out card in there. It's a bit broken. Not surprising with the age, you know, it's all fractured and stuff. But at least it's there. So it's had a slight thing on that corner. It's also got a scratch on it, which means it's probably pre existing. Likely some damage from before, you know, sometime in its life. Nothing from postage. So it has its original feet, which is always nice. So look at the back of it. Switches for setting the voltage. Excellent. That makes it a lot easier. You have to open up and change jumpers or things like that. So let's set it up now. So it's currently set at 120 volts, I think. Yes, 120 volts. But I need 240 volts. Let's switch this up here. So I think 240 is coming straight across in that path there, so that's 240 volts there now, which is what I need, nice and simple. So what else we've got to do here, well we've got a fuse which I will have to look at changing. I won't worry about just now to do testing, so it needs a 1 amp fuse in there, that's fine, I'll change that. So we've got cheap OB, modulation input, sweep out, it's not there. Interesting it's got different plugs, so maybe had these options at some point, or that one maybe, and they chopped them out, I don't know. Seems interesting, maybe it did have a sweep out, but got changed. But anyway, cheap OB. I'll go over use it anyway. Massive heat sink. So, at least now it's on 240 volt. I can plug it in, test it. 
and there's always a good chance that when I do 240 volt testing that will go bang and emit it magic smoke because those input filters they like to blow up when I have a voltage input in, into them which they're not used to because they've always run 110 volts, 120 volts or whatever they've had a fairly easy life and when they double the voltage the capacitors tend to explode so that's always clock of magic smoke I've had that on video a couple of times where that's happened whilst I've been testing a piece of gear and I've just got it powered up on 240 volts for the first time and after a minute or so it goes bang it happens so you never know it could happen again so stick around and see what happens so let's have a look at buttons see if they seem all right sounds a bit clicky as it was sounds a bit clicky that's not unusual for these gear these kinds of gear they need a bit of lubrication on the buttons power switch these ones are momentary switches just uh nice and simple those ones aren't bad yeah, all the switches seem basically okay. A few is just slightly clicky. What it is, they've got like a little spring seal plate inside them, which flexes, and they will kind of bind up a little bit, and um, they get stuck, and they don't flex nicely. And what can actually happen as well, it can actually fracture. When they fracture, then they stop working at all. Um, I do actually have a spare HP front panel from something else, which has those buttons on it with those little strips on them, and they're really commonly used. So if I do give one which fails, at least I've got some spare spring sh strips to put in. Which is why I picked it up, because I wasn't too worried about it. And as it turns out, I've never used any parts of it. So I thought I did need to at the time. But I managed to repair the original. So, yeah, that one is a bit cliffy, but it's not a big deal. Anyway, this is a 8165A programmable signal source. 1 millihertz to 50 megahertz. Don't know if it works, don't remember. Um, it's got some slight scratches across there. Nothing too major. B and C's don't appear to be damaged so that's good let's plug some power and see what happens if it goes bang or not so I've got this plugged in the power ready to go I've got this turned on to set 230 volts I've got my hopping meter over here which will tell us the power so if something's going horribly wrong with the power supply we should be able to see the wattage just there you may or may not be able to see it, it might be out of focus too much but uh, I want to capture the front panel so power's going in let's push the button okay well that's drawing half a watt and nothing's working so it doesn't work excellent so you go there's the hobby meter over there and I'll turn the power on and there we go half a watt so yep definitely dead you buying more broken stuff again yeah That's great, so there'll be a future video on this repair, obviously, because now I need to fix it, which is perfect because that's exactly what I want, as I want to buy broken gear so I can fix it and do videos on it. That's the intention. I paid probably, I don't know, borderline too much on this thing, also it's more than I really wanted to pay. The, the postage price was more than the device, as happens a lot these days, so this itself I paid a good price for, it was okay, it wasn't much, but when you add on the postage cost as well, Especially being such a big item that bolts up quite a bit. So if I aimed to fix this thing, if I were to sell it, I probably wouldn't make any money on it. I'd probably break even. Um, very likely to be the case, so wish me luck anyway. Hopefully I can fix it. If I'm on. So make sure you watch out for this video in the future. I've got some other budgets already queued up. I've already got the Rekhold Dana 2101 frequency counter to fix. I've got another Datron 1062 to fix. I've got the... Datron 4700 calibrator to fix and then I've got this thing so this is in my queue of things to do and um, a lawnmower I've got a lawnmower to fix that's at the front of the queue better be um, yeah give me a thumbs up subscribe catch you next one after I fix the lawnmower <laughs>